Philly got their fourth straight win on the road, and they're now six road wins away from surpassing their entire 2019 total. This starts with defense, specifically in the fourth quarter, because that's where this game was decided. Let's see what happens. 29%. Sacramento shot just 29% from the floor in the fourth quarter. Oh, good block. Hold on, let's talk about the fourth quarter because this is kind of crazy. So again, Sacramento only hit two threes in the fourth quarter and had a three minute scoring drought right in the middle of the quarter. Detroit had a fourth quarter against Philly with only two made threes and five turnovers. Okay. Indiana had a seven turnover fourth quarter against Philly where they shot one for seven from deep. Oh, Miami had a six turnover fourth quarter against Philly. Wait, this month? Brooklyn had a six turnover fourth quarter against Philly where they only made two threes? And Boston too? A six turnover fourth quarter where they only made one? Bro, we get it. This squad owns the best defensive rating in the fourth quarter in the entire league. Leave defensive rating to the nerds like me. Let me keep it simple. They're top three in total steals and blocks in the fourth quarter, and they're holding teams to 31% shooting from three. That's crazy. I'm not gonna lie, I think this is the most talented group in the front office, the sidelines, and the court that Ben and Joe have ever played with. Just look at how simple the coaches are making the game for everybody. Joel Embiid with... Damn, already? Let's talk about why this is a bucket or a foul. There's three shooters around the perimeter, but what's crazy is that you can see the gravity. Look at how far off the three-point line Seth and Tobias are. That pulls Buddy Hill to Marvin Bagley a little farther away from the paint. That takes away congestion, and the players can see the entire court. Look, Rashawn, you're my guy and all. But tonight, tonight you will go one-on-one -on -one with the Undertaker. I mean, look at what the Sixers are doing. Joe gets the rock and faces up, and now he's basically got four out, one in. Four players around the perimeter. He sees the entire floor. He pretty much has the entire side of the floor to do whatever he wants on. And oh yeah, it's sweet baby Ray's barbecue chicken served hot on a platter trying to defend him. We've seen this story before. We all know how this is gonna end. Hassan Whiteside, bro, this isn't what you want. What are you gonna do to, like, how are you gonna guard that? This dude's a freak. He's like 7'2". The Sixers are just diabolical this season. You've got shooting good enough to space the floor in transition. And funny enough, Tobias is top 10 in points and field goal percentage in transition this year. I'll equate this to a running back or a receiver in the open field in football. You want your playmaker to pick up the first down or get to the end zone. Tobias, it's the same thing. Get to the rack and get a grown man bucket. See a player like Tobias, his game is predicated upon hitting his spots and taking taking the mismatch to school. Philly's naturally producing these favorable one-on-one -on -one matchups. That's why I think Philly will sustain this production. They're playing fundamental ball, and this system is a perfect complement to their core. Like this right here, this is the epitome of the money look. There's three train to splash shooters around the perimeter spacing the floor. Ben's working around the dunker, which is exactly where you need him. Now Joe can see the entire floor and pick which spot he wants to attack. It's Buddy Heald defending him. He physically, genetically, whatever, can't defend Joe. He literally can't. See, this look makes the game simple. Joe can exploit this mismatch and get to a spot where you can't stop him. He's either getting a bucket or getting fouled. But more importantly, he has eyes on the only defender that could play help defense in the area. Yes, sir! Sacramento, he's coming for you. Talk to him, Joe. Uh, keep it high, man's a beast. All right, cut it real quick. This is the money look, just foul line extended. You played all around the world where you shot in one corner and then at each spot until you got to the next corner, right? Like, you know what I'm talking about? All right, now imagine playing all around the world inside of the perimeter on a basket that's only three feet taller than you and holding a basketball is like holding a tennis ball for you. That's what this is for Joe. This is a game within the game, a one-on-one. -on -one. The Sixers are saying our guy is gonna go get a bucket. Can you stop him? And because it's a one-on-one, -on -one, the options are endless for Joe. So like any normal, any normal 7'2", uh, 280 pound center, he spins out of a double team and hits a fadeaway J from the mid-range? Do you realize how OP 
like how overpowered that is like i will say sacramento did a great job fronting joe and giving him fits the whole night they prepared for joe joe did take 14 free throws which marked the ninth of his last 11 games with 10 or more free throws that's crazy and this game exemplified his new mentality that if you double me we're gonna score if you don't double me we're gonna score now we can start where we usually start let's open the playbook this is one of the most common yet simple looks in doc's playbook it's always some variation of two screens and a handoff the goal is to get your playmaker in a space and draw legal contact with these screens so the on-ball defender can't even interfere you can weaponize your screeners or your ball handler in so many different ways like look Rashawn Holmes has to step up and pick up Cork because the on-ball defender is nowhere near him Cork used a quick hezzy and got downhill and the Sixers naturally produced a numbers advantage and that's the game changer the numbers advantage here's the same look Handoff, staggered screen for Shake, the playmaker. All you're trying to do is get him downhill or to his spot. And at the same time, the Sixers weaponize their screener, Dwight Howard. He positions himself to receive this pass from Shake and gets a big bucket for Philly. The Sixers also showcased a new wrinkle. Everyone's on edge because Joe's getting the ball near one of his spots, but really he's the QB of the offense right here. Seth sets an off ball, Tobias goes back door. That's an easy find for the 7-2 QB. Just a possession or two later, the Sixers showcased the same look but Sacramento was a little more prepared but Seth Curry opens up and initiates the two-man game with Joe the screen creates some space he manipulates coverage and the rest is Fiji this is kind of a similar action but not the same Ben draws a double reads the defense and makes his mind up this pass isn't going to anybody except for Joe outside of spacing and the playbook the Sixers are creating crazy number advantages the two-man game is a huge source of offense for Philly the floor is so spread out that you're breaking a game of fives down into a game of twos. It's all about getting your playmaker in a space so they can do whatever they gotta do to get two or three. Like for example, this is where numbers mean nothing to me. This is a ball player up against another ball player, not a percentage against a percentage. You want your ball player hitting their spot before the other ball player gets there. It doesn't matter what Shake Milton's shooting percentage is at that spot. If you can get there and the defense gives it to you, you take it. Look bro, I'm not gonna lie. Cork's been in the lab. Doc trusts him as a playmaker. Don't show him the bunnies, Cork. Don't you? Oh my God. There's basically no one on this squad that doesn't benefit from the two man game. It's another way to just keep the game simple for these guys. Seth communicates with Ben. He gets a screen. And look at what happens. He draws a switch. And he's a curry. That family has a long history of cooking mismatches. The Sixers maintain their top 10 presence in pick and roll ball handler points and field goal percentage, whereas they've been bottom three in each season since 2015. And even the bigs are pulling their own weight in the two-man game. That's a good business decision, Marvin Bagley. Respect. Even Dwight, he's shooting close to 60% as a roller. Let's talk about 2-5 for a minute. Look at the basketball IQ here. Ben notices Sacramento is tripling Joe, so he's like, here, give me the ball. I got it. He dropped 14 points. Hold on, what am I about to watch? Look at the cross. Oh my, is he lost? Someone get this man a roadmap. Anyway, Ben scored in his usual spot. It was 14 points in this one, but over his last nine games, he's at almost 16 points per game. But it's really his playmaking and his facilitating that make him such a heavily impactful player. Like this dude takes Danny Green's defender off of him, creates a shot for him, and hits him with a dot without even looking at him. For real, 2-5 has Hall of Fame Dimer equipped. For those who don't know what Dimer is, this is a badge in 2K that increases the shot percentage for teammates on jump shots after catching a pass in a catch and shoot situation. So in other words, Ben Simmons is the true quarterback of the Sixers offense. He's the guy you want with the ball in his hands because he does things like this. Can't really get downhill. Let me create a three for my teammate. And I tell you this every breakdown, nobody in the league has more assisted three point makes than Ben Simmons. He has more than the rest of the starting five he plays with combined. He just confronts and absorbs defenses head on and generates great looks for his teammates. Defensively, you know what he brings he's top five in total steals and deflections good change of pace cross uh-huh take it strong yes sir but ben dog 
If you don't just dunk the ball here like Ben, come on. Oh my the second God. unit was all right. They played fine. You can maybe use some more depth, but I'm cool with the second unit. I don't have any problems there right now. It seemed like Doc was experimenting with different rotations in this game. The first player off the bench was actually Furkan Korkmaz. And I'll emphasize again, he's been playing great ball recently. He's shooting 45% on catch and shoot threes in his last 10 games. The second unit combined for 32 points on 56% shooting. Real briefly, let's look at the defense. Danny Green didn't have too much fun with De'Aaron Fox's speed. I mean, Ben didn't exactly either, but he held Fox to two of eight shooting. De'Aaron Fox is fast, like he's gonna be deadly. But when it mattered, Philly turned him into a non-factor and held him to just 3 of 13 shooting in the fourth. There definitely was a little bit of defensive miscommunication in this game. Like here, someone's got to step up and stop ball. That's not a random dribbling. That's De'Aaron Fox. Matisse got caught gambling. That left Buddy Heald with a wide open lane to the basket. The Sixers scored a season high 42 points in the first quarter, but the defense in the first half was a little lazy. They cleaned it up though. In terms of pick and roll coverage, the Sixers stay true to what they do every game. Dwight and Joe are rim protectors, so you can't really afford to have them pull too far away from the basket. In coverage, the Sixers drop their bigs towards the basket, which is what most teams do. It's only really annoying and detrimental when stuff like this happens. Seth Curry can't get in front of Buddy Heald, and there's just too much space between Heald and Joe. The counter argument is that if you have your rim protecting big pulled this far away from the basket, they'll get beat by speed. Otherwise, Philly wasn't afraid to adapt. They went under screens and took some shots away. Joe was pulled really far away from the basket, and yet still made a real athletic play. He hedged the screen, caught up with Buddy Heald, and took Heald's layup away, and then got to the rim to bother another shot. They've been switching on screens a lot lately too which is good because they have one of the most switchable defenses in the Look, game. Look fam that's it for me. I appreciate you hanging out with me. As always I'll see you when I see you. I hope it's in the next one but if not hit me up with a sub, comment below, holler at me on Twitter. Do whatever you gotta do but most importantly you gotta stay solid. Stay solid baby. I'm off this bro.